Hi friend, welcome to your tutorial video on how to make a Stay Cozy Big Cotton Baby Boat. So before we get started, I wanted to show you my finished baby boat so that you have an idea of what you're going to be making today. So I made uh, this baby boat in the Big Cotton Emerald color that we have because I just love the way that it looks. And as you can see, um, this is a nice size for a little baby um, or even a pet that you have that one that you need a pet bed for. So I really like this design because it's simple. It's fairly easy to make, um, even if you have no experience with hand knitting or hand crocheting. Um, and so I'm excited to teach you today. So we are going to get started. And please, when you're done, um, I hope that this tutorial is very easy to follow. I've tried to give you step-by-step -step instructions and some extra information and text um, that you may need while you're going along. But please feel free to stop the video at any time. Um, I had to do that when I was learning, just kind of take it slow if there's something that you aren't understanding. Rewind, rewatch it. Um, but if you do have any questions that you just can't figure out, please feel free to reach out to me however we have connected in the past, whether that's through email on my website or through Facebook or Instagram. So I'm happy to help you and I just want you to enjoy this craft and this art form as much as I have. Okay, so you should have your two and a half kilos of big cotton yarn. And we are going to get started by finding the end piece. You can find it, the white fluffy part, and you can roll out some of your yarn a little bit. And to get started, we're going to do a simple slip knot. And so the easiest way to do that is to fold it over and then to tuck that through. And I would recommend making this um, about three inches wide is good. And make sure you have a few inches of a tail because we'll be tucking that in at the end so that you can't see it. So how we're going to get started is we are going to make our first uh, row, kind of like our foundational row. I like to work with my yarn coming in from the top um, and just make sure that it's out of my way and that it's easy to grab when I need it. So what I'm going to do is put my hand through, pull my working yarn and twist. And so you want each of these to be about the same size. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, but um, I wouldn't do much bigger than this or else um, then you'll have kind of a big gap right where the baby or your pet is going to be laying. So this is a good size to start with. And we're gonna do 10 of these across. So again, you put your hand through, grab your working yarn, pull it through and twist. Go through and twist. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once you have them, just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And no, now we're going to start with our first row on this side. So you're gonna pull, go through with your hand and pull a stitch through, just like we had been doing. But this time, we're gonna fold it over. You're gonna put your hand through that stitch. And then you can see that there's an X here with your yarn. And so that's where you know where your next hole is. So this one and then your next one will be right here. And you wanna stay in this top hole because we'll be using this bottom one when we come back around. So you don't wanna do here, you wanna go up here. So you're gonna go through, pull your yarn through, have both your loops over your hand, and then you're gonna pull a loop three through. So you pull down, go through, Put your hand through and pull your next loop through. So 
So we find your next hole. Keep your hand in here. Pull your next stitch through. Grab your working yarn and pull that through both of these. So you'll just have to keep unraveling your yarn throughout your project as you need it. So hand through, find your next hole, grab your yarn, and then pull your working yarn through both of those. So you want to make sure that you don't miss this end hole. It's easy to miss because sometimes it gets pulled tight. So you want to make sure that you find that last hole and go through there like you have been. Okay, and now we're going to turn. So when we go around this corner and start working back on the other side, we're actually going to um, do a double stitch. So we're going to cross over to this other side, pull our working yarn through, and then you're going to go through that same hole again for a second time and do the same stitch again. So you're going to pull that through, have your two stitches, and then take your working yarn through. And now you work your way back the other way just like we did on the first side. So you cross down. So and it's important as you're going that you don't miss a loop. It can be easy to move on to the next one but you want to make sure that you're going to the next hole and working there or else your finished baby boat will be a little lopsided if it's uneven on both sides. Yeah, so make sure that you're always grabbing um, the piece of working yarn that's right there. You don't want to grab up here or you'll have a bunch of extra yarn in the way. Okay, so now we've made it our way all the way around once. We have our first row complete. And so when we get to the end here, we're going to go do our double stitch again. So that's where we cross over. Do one stitch and then find that same hole again and do the same thing a second time. And then we're going to work our way around for our second row. We're going to do the same thing and then we'll eventually get to our third row and do the same thing. So you just want to make sure that you're sticking in this top part. Pulling your working yarn through and then moving on to your next. So at the end again, we're going to go through this one twice. And the reason that we do that is so that your baby boat doesn't get very pointy and narrow at the top and make sure that there's enough room for the baby's head or the baby's feet or for 
um, your pet that's laying there. So it just helps it widen a little bit. So two more times <coughs> through this loop here. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a good place to pause and just show you if you're going around and you lose count of how many times have you gone around or how much longer do you need to go. Um, here you can see that this is one row and then two rows. And then on this side, we've done one, two, three rows. So we know that we need to complete that third row going all the way around. And when you get to um, here where your bed is getting a little bit wider, you wanna finish that row and then this next one kind of after you go past the center point is the one that you do twice. So we go through once and then go through twice. Okay, so now that we've made it around, we can see that we have one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we are gonna start building up our sides a little bit so that your baby has um, some walls to keep it in place and that they aren't rolling all over the place or that your pet um, has kind of a little um, wall to lean up against while they're sleeping. So what we're going to do then is change this up a little bit and instead of just going through this one top part of your stitch you're actually going to go through both of these so you're going to put your hand through this stitch like you have before and reach under both of these 
and then pull through. And we're going to do two in that same uh, first stitch again. And then you'll continue down this side. So it's the same movement, um, but we're going through both sides of that stitch. And same thing up here, we're going to go through this one twice. So you can see that um, we're making a very nice uh, base mat for your boat and this will give uh, your baby plenty of space um, to lay on. Um, Oops. So if you get confused, <laughs> like I just did, you can kind of undo that. Um, so I know that I did one of those, and then I'm going to do my second one. Okay, so we did one, and then two. So it's okay if you need to pull things out just to double count. Make sure that you're doing it the way that you want to, and then keep moving. That's one of the nice things about this craft is that it's very forgiving. And even though it can be frustrating to undo, um, usually the second time you do something, you do it a little bit quicker because you know what you're doing and where you're going with it. So not a big deal if you find yourself needing to stop and undo something along the way. It happens to me still now. So remember, make sure you're going through both underneath both of those sides of the stitch. Okay, so now we've made it all the way around. We have this nice big mat that you're going to be working with. And now we're going to be um, finishing off and really giving our boat that um, kind of boat look to it, really pulling up the sides a little bit with our last time around. So it may seem like you still have quite a bit of yarn left, um, but it does take more than you think. Um, to finish it off and go around this last time, especially since our mat has gotten bigger. So for this last one, um, we are only going to go through this top part once. So I know on all the other ones we've done two, on this last one we are only going to do the stitch once. And so it's really up to you how tightly you do this last row. Um, I like to make it a little bit tighter than the rows that we've done before. So how you can do that is just make your, your stitches a little bit smaller rather than bigger. If you make them bigger, then it, your boat will kind of end up laying a little flatter and looser. Um, the smaller your stitch, then the tighter um, it kind of pulls up the sides for you. So that's also an easy fix if you get done and kind of want the 
boat to be a little looser, you can undo this last row and do it again. Um, so again, we're going under these last or these two stitches, pulling up and through. So you can see already how this side is starting to turn up a little bit on its own. And it will continue to do that, especially since we only go, since we're only going to do one stitch through this uh, top one, it kind of pulls it a little bit tighter together. So you can see how the boat is really coming together. It's starting to pull up on the sides. And um, I actually think that we're gonna have enough to do one more loop around. So I may be wrong, but um, I'm at least gonna give a go of it. This will give you a little more height on your ends and also give you more flexibility in how much your baby boat pushes out and is flexible for sizing. <clears throat> So again, I'm only going to do once through this top stitch. And again, the same thing with this last row, the smaller your stitches, the tighter it will uh, pull your bow up on the sides. The more loose your stitches, then the more it will want to lay down flat. So we have one more um, side to go, and then we will be done.
there you can see that we have made our way all the way around. It's kind of hard to see the depth of this in the video, but hopefully um, you are seeing that in the one that you're making right now. Um, you can see that it had some sides here, which is really nice um, because really your baby doesn't need a ton of space side to side, especially when they're little. Um, but that edging is really nice because you can wrap them up and kind of swaddle them and they have um, a buffer and something to lean on if they happen to roll a little bit. So what I'm going to show you now is how to finish this off. So I have a little bit of yarn left. Like I said, it will kind of depend for you how big you did your stitches. Um, but we are going to end this here. And what I usually do is um, come around. Sometimes I'll redo this just depending on how chunky it looks, if I like the way that it is laying or if it um, looks a little too, too bulky like that. Then instead of going under both of them, sometimes I will just go under one. Um, it lays a little bit flatter that way. And then what we're going to do is actually pull some of this yarn through. And then we're going to trim this off. So so make sure that you don't cut the wrong end of your yarn. You want to have a little bit of a tail here. And what we're going to do is just um, put this through that hole and that way you kind of have a seamless end where you can't really tell unless you were looking super close and knew what you were looking for. And what we're going to do over here is we're going to tuck this in and then we're going to hide it by sewing it. So there's not a strict science to how to do this, but usually just find a spot that looks like it would tuck under nicely. Um, you don't have to do it too many times. Um, at least once is nice, maybe twice if you really want, all right? And then you wanna find a spot where you can sew it. So I'm going to sew mine right behind here. And I can trim this a little bit more. <coughs> And then you're gonna fold this back. And then we're going to trim this inside off. And what this does is just makes it easier to sew this end together. So you wanna tuck this in just to give it a nice finished edge. And then with if you signed up for a workshop with this tutorial, then um, you should have received a needle and thread. So I have not threaded mine yet. I should have done that before, but I will do that now. So if you got a needle and thread in with your baby boat kit, then it was probably around this length of thread. And so this is actually enough thread to finish both ends of your baby boat, the beginning and the end. So I am not a master seamstress by any means. So if you have a better way of doing this that you know of, then feel free to do that. Um, but I usually just tuck it behind and I'll kind of roll that yarn over so that I can put the needle and thread through this base piece of yarn and then through these two layers um, that I'm trying to connect to it. So in doing this, we're closing up the end of our yarn and also connecting it to the rest of our basket so that it's not just flopping around, so that you don't have stuffing coming out, and so that it's secure and nicely finished.
So again, you're gonna use this thread to not only close up this end, but also the um, front part. So I usually will um, sew that up and then make a couple knots looping through and then um, kind of hide this thread back in through here just a little bit. it through and you can trim it off and once you tuck that in no one will be able to tell where it ended so now we're going to flip this over and go back to where we began so um, you don't necessarily have to tuck this in but I usually will tuck it in under at least one of the stitches and then same thing as we did before um, as you can trim your excess yarn fold this back trim off the inside and then with your remaining thread you want to tie that up usually do at least two knots just to make sure that the knot is big enough where it's not going to slip through the hole with the needle. So you can do that. Trim off the excess if you want. And then same thing as we did on the other end. You're just going to roll this fabric in on itself. Find a good spot to sew it under. And then make sure that you're going through all three of these layers. So your base yarn that you're connecting it to, and then both sides of the end yarn that you're wanting to close up. So I just go in through the bottom and then wrap back around. So in through, pull it around. So same thing on the end of this one is make a few knots. And then you can hide the rest of this thread. Oh, kind of push it back through and trim off the end. So you tuck that under. No one will ever know. And congratulations. You have made a baby boat. So I love these so much. Um, another great thing about them is that they are machine washable and so you can throw them in on gentle cycle if there's throw up on them or anything else. Um, you can spot clean them if you need to also and then I would put them on tumble dry in your dryer. Um, and then you can also air dry if to just kind of help maintain its shape and to make sure that it doesn't shrink or anything since the outside of this yarn is made of cotton. So the nice thing with these is that they're kind of, they're flexible as your baby grows, they can kind of push out on them and it's easy to get use for them for many months to come. So thank you so much for following along. Uh, please visit staycozyco.com if you have any other yarn needs, um, if you want to make another baby boat or a blanket, or if you have any other projects that you'd like to work on, I'd be happy to provide yarn for you and answer any questions that you have. So please feel free to reach out there or on Instagram or Facebook. So thank you so much. Enjoy your baby boat.